All right, so here we go. We're gonna try and squeeze a game in, and we got Toadstone, which is which is rather exciting. Uh, I've never played him before. I've heard some uh, things in Discord about him, but he's number five on Axis and number three on Allies. So obviously a very good player. Uh, I just did a real quick scan on um, good old Discord. Uh, it just it sounds like he just is a very aggressive style, which sounds like it would be a fun game. Lots of air and navy, depending on where things go. So, you know, those are the type of games. I generally like until the dice go against me, so hopefully we uh, get decent dice here. Um, I didn't really get a whole whole feel of his strategy, so I don't know if my KJF or my KGF will be the uh, way to go. But uh, so we're just gonna play it normal, or start out normal at least. It's pretty pretty interesting. The uh, game got selected almost immediately upon hitting it, so that's exciting. So I knew I had to have somebody in the platinum rather than uh, what appears to be. Oh, what am I doing? That's what I get for talking while clicking. To do be doing their uh, placement game late in the season, and then uh, the other game where I had a, a gentleman in his gold, which he he played relatively well. Um, it was a bloodbath game, so it was just a matter of managing my Russian units that, you know, Russia was very low on units, but so was Germany. And y'all saw my little, he did the carrier, G1 carrier build, so. Alright, here we go. Let's focus in on this game now. Let's get some, uh, some good dice here. Or at least average dice, that's all I really care about. If I get average dice against good players, then I'm, I'm happy to have a good game. Whether we'll be able to get a whole game in or not, well... We'll just have to see. Of course, my schedule doesn't always allow for for it greatly, but we're gonna try. And that's low. No more than one hit. Ugh. I was just saying, no more than one hit back. <laughs> so that's gonna expose me in Corellia right off the bat. worst feeling is when the bomber hits. When the bomber hits, you just know you're in for a rough Ukraine. This is starting out okay. Let's finish it. Ooh, three hits. Ooh, could we have a retreat possibility here? Okay. Come on, miss, 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 miss. Ooh, this is like my bingo of when I like to retreat, but he likes heavy axis air. Ooh, I gotta pause and think on this one a second. Oh, I'm not gonna pause and think. I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna retreat. Um, even with the five five infantry West Russia. And actually, the retreat kind of helps me with that because now I can pull the tanks back and still dead zone Corelli a little bit. Although it gives him this fighter, and if he likes heavy Axis air. We know how I struggled against the heavy axis air recently, so. Um, but we're gonna do it. This is the this is the one scenario I like to retreat in. This scenario is with the uh, three tanks. Um, I just I something good feeling about having the uh, six tanks floating around. Yeah. 
meeny meeny miny mo. Yeah, I'm gonna pull him back. Just because that one loss here, and just knowing he's such a great player, uh, I'm gonna prepare as best I can. Uh, let's see, we got seven, eight, nine. He could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the battleship, but that'd be risking a lot for him, so. All right. I'm excited about this game, but I'm also kind of worried that I'm going to rush to try to get this game in in time and uh, make mistakes. And uh, at the same time, um, we only got 11 days and then the game's gone. So, all right. There we go. There's turn one. All right, so here we go. Uh, turns out he is doing a tank rush, which I I don't know that we're going to be able to play a game. I think I just want to do fun with this. I'm not going to make the top 10. It's too late in the season for me to do that. So I think I just want to have fun with this. And I want to see if my, my sub by UK twist, possibly a KJF in the face of a tank rush can work. It'd be insane. People think I'm going to be crazy going for a a KJF with a tank rush. Um, so that makes it all that much more fun. So I don't know that this is actually the smart play. I think this is just the fun play, to be honest. But we're going to give it a go. We're going to see what we can do with buying one infantry, one sub, a fighter, and a bomber. So let's see what we can do. One of the reasons I want to do this is because with a tank rush, I do want to get the fighters to the center. And as much as, you know, it's tempting because I could clear this, do just a uh, carrier transport drop this turn. And uh, this is how I, I played against Entex um, in my league game. I'm doing well. Is I went ahead and just got the aggressive and was started trading really quickly. And I think we're going to pull that off in a KGF. But this is a different game and I just want to try something different. So I'm going to try something different. And we're gonna let the let him live. Now, you know, one thing with his placement, so he's got no fighters on the east or excuse me, west coast over here. These fighters can't get to season thirteen, neither can these, so we're just gonna take this. Now he could come back and attack, but that's gonna weaken any sort of play here in the middle. Plus I'm gonna be able to bring my US guys down there too, so I think he'll attack back this way. Catch a tiger by its toe. All right, yeah, I think we're, uh, I think we're set. I think that's all the attacks. It's tempting to do the four v four right here, though. I'm just, but I do, I do need to protect from Jape. No, he's gonna take Caucasus. So, I mean, India's gonna fall quick. So maybe I should just, you know, plow ahead there. Three four. Five, six, we can have four there. Mm. Let's pull them back. Tempting as it is.
is three. is enough that my transport could grab back three units um, and a battleship with an infantry artillery I don't, I don't think that's a take battle um, kind of wanted to take my tank all the way in but I want to leave I don't want to have to bring my US fighter over here I think um, can if he doesn't do anything with them so I can't land them here One, two, three, four. and you should be able to land them here so I want to keep this the dead zone so I'm putting a bomber up here so we'll have our two bombers that could hit the uh, battleship anywhere One, two, six I guess that's not true because he's going to take Caucasus, isn't he? I'm going to put the fighter down here. Eh, we'll let the battleship live. You know, you guys, if you've seen me enough, <laughs> I tend to not stress too much about the battleship these days. Oh, you know what? I got yelled at for that so I mean two fighters versus a destroyer carrier fighter no one's gonna take that no one's gonna take that I'm going I don't care no one's taking that battle I'm not gonna weaken mine because of a bug weaken my play because of a bug he, he can't it'd be silly for him to take that battle I'm helping him out if he's gonna take that shot not to mention even if he won it I'm gonna have enough to I'd wipe him out anyway, so. Pan can't hit him. You will have the German fighters that could hit their next turn, though. You know what? That may not be the best place, as much as I like having him there. Because the German fighters could move there. I would need to pull some Russians back to here first. Well, we're going to be pulling these guys back before that Germany goes. Even if they, they, if they take them out, I could bring some back this way. I think we're going to be able to get them out, right? We'll, have, we'll be able to put... He's not going to attack these guys. Yeah, I'm going to say we're going to be fine. Because we'll be able to pull those guys back. We'll see what he does. There we go. I didn't think it through all the way. I'm not sure I played it right, but we'll Alright, so here we go. US one, it's deciding time. Um, <clears throat> and I, I think this is gonna be a fun one. So, you know, right off the bat, you know, the very first thing I notice is he left me the opportunity where I can use a cruiser block and build in India UK two, so <clears throat> we can do a fleet drop on UK two. If you recall, this is the one where I was able to do that retreat of my tank. So I got six tanks. It does mean he's doing this um, tank blitz, which is going to be very painful. Uh, 
if I just, well, I'm deciding to go KJF, so I'm just going to say that outright. And the, the, the biggest reason being is whenever I do my UK twist with this sub setup here, with this setup here, my whole deciding factor, but not my whole deciding, but a large part of my deciding factor of what I'm going to do is Japan 1's purchase. If they buy three transports, then that's my key to go KJF. If they buy two transports or less and then buy some boats and planes, then I'm most likely going to do KGF uh, because that one less transport offsets the fact that I bought a sub and then you know, I lost two infantry here. Then I can still defend India on the uh, J3. But when they go transports, that's when I go, okay, let's go KJF. And he also skipped Pearl, which will be nice for me in that regards. Um, so, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> um, trying to decide exactly what how I want to handle the sub here. I do want to take him out. Uh, I'm just not sure exactly if I want to send a uh, fighter after him as well, or just the destroyer. If I want to take the shot at just the destroyer going there. Two. Yeah, I think I'm going to send the fighter too, just to be on the safe side. So, in any case, um, getting ahead of myself a little bit. So, we look a little bit closer at this whole setup. And in particular, here at the India, my, so I, I go, okay, so I can do a cruiser block and be set up. But now, he also has his battleship and a carrier up here, in particular, the battleship up here. So, he's got four boats that can hit C-Zone 35. He's got his bomber, and he's got his one, two, three, four. So four of the fighters, four of the six, two of those fighters can't really attack there, right? One, two, three, they got nowhere to go, so I need the, the two carriers. So four of those fighters, a bomber, and four boats, including a battleship. So essentially nine attacking 10 hit points. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and his fighter makes seven. I can build a carrier as eight, and I got two fighters to make nine and ten, and I can build two more boats to make twelve. So I can have twelve hit points sitting here versus, again, what I say, he's got uh, eight, nine, ten hit points. So I can actually just directly stack C Zone 35. I don't even have to waste a cruiser for a block. So on the other end, as you guys probably know, if you've watched me a bit, my early US, I like to come up to C-Zone 64 and I, when I do this India build, because then he has to decide which way does he want to go with um, Japan. If he doesn't come down this way, then I'm going to be taking DEI. I, I probably will take DEI regardless on turn UK 3. Um, and then my whole goal is that we are going to have the U.S. and Philippines by U.S. 5 at the latest. So the interesting part of this, so th this side, the Pacific side, up just like I would like it to be. I was able to do my retreat with my tanks just like I like it to be. But what I've never done before is done this in the face of a tank rush. Because these tank rushes, anybody who's faced a tank rush in just a KGF knows that they can be deadly. And a KJF, I don't know that I can do this. I'll be honest. I don't know if I can do this. Uh, I haven't tried it. I've always wanted to try it. My rank season, I'm not going to get to the top 10. So I'm going to take this advantage of playing a top 10 Axis player with a tank rush. And just see what I can do with a KJF. Um some other interesting points that's going to come about is this UK bomber, right? So he's got seven air flying right over the top of it because he's going to want to bring these, this air uh, in here to Caucasus as well. Of course, if he's taking all his air and I'm building here, he's not going to be in 61, so he's going to have to retreat, and I'm going to have some guys over here that can be 
attack, and so hopefully we're going to pressure him in to the fact that he can't have his UK or can't have his Japan air this direction for too long. But the fact is, is he's going to get Caucasus. I've conceded that. So with that happening, India is pretty much an afterthought at this point. India is going to fall, and even to Germany potentially G three. If not to Germany, certainly to Japan, we'll have the opportunity to. Although I'm going to have a lot of people trying to dead zone season 36. But they, they can march in if they want to. So there is definitely, definitely India is going to fall. I'd rather it to fall to Japan. But um, there's a good chance it'll fall to Germany. But if he does that, he's going to have to take his tanks down this way. And can if he does that, can Russia put a wedge between his European forces and his tank forces? And if I can do that then I think we'd have a shot. <clears throat> Especially since I'm probably just going to use these U.S. to start ferrying units back and forth from U.S. into Africa. Um, and just start working them in this, this way to start defending Africa early. So, in any case, here we go. This is going to be fun. Um, this game is oops, this game is just uh, about having fun on this one at this point and, and testing out you know, a KJF against an aggressive top-notch player. You know, we had that game against um, Commander CD in the uh, when he was ranked number one Axis and did this, and we won that one easily, but we did have some favorable dice, so I don't know that I can completely hang my hat on that game. I am going to go ahead and get a second carrier. Those that have watched my video, which I will come back later, the most cost-efficient defense is a carrier when there's already fighters for it to land on and we've got four fighters right here only one carrier so we do want to go ahead and get a carrier up there asap um, there is one more fighter so buying a carrier fighter is the next best but i'm not sure that this fighter is going to be able to come over to the pacific anytime soon it's probably gonna have to be helping out over on this front so i'm not counting on him so we're gonna go my new usual two destroyer two sub carrier us1 build don't think we actually have any attacks. Oh, whip, yep, this guy here. So, US-1, we're going to be here. We've got two fighters that can make it up there with the carrier. Best he could do is carrier, battleship, two fighters can reach there. The bomber cannot. So, I'm going to have battleship, carrier, sub, destroyer, two fighters. So, we're good. Other carriers going here. I'm landing my fighter down here. Now, normally US-2, I like to go to C-Zone 64, and I'm going to be not able to come all the way up there. But by US-3, we're coming down 58, 59, or 60, they really let me. But my US-2, I'll be here. US-3, I can fly into any of these C-Zones from Pearl and catch back up to my carrier. So we're going to use the fighter to make sure we get that hit. <clears throat> Otherwise, I believe that really is our only attack. I'm not going to waste my bomber to do that. I'm going to bring two transports to here so that he can't take both Gibraltar and Morocco. And that way, my two UK bombers should be able to target the battleship. Um, we're still probably going to set up the... US down here. I gotta rethink I gotta think about that for a moment. But we've got C zone sixteen taken care of by these guys. Again C zone seventeen actually is taken care of by the UK bombers and fighters, so I don't really actually need to worry about UK's got pretty much all of it covered. We're going to have, oh, that's why I was thinking, with the U.S. fighter here, and I'm bringing the destroyer down, he can't hit the destroyer. If I have my bomber in range of here, then I can use destroyer, fighter, bomber to clear 14 if he was to go there, 14 or 15 if he was to go to one of those. So that's where I want to, I want to bring my U.K. bomber down here, or excuse me, U.S. bomber down here into Africa so that it can hit 14 or 15. I want to bring my U.S. fighter 
on into here because I don't believe I need him in West Russia so that he could fly across and we'll have 14 dead zone by the US, 14, 15 by US, 17, 16, 17 by the UK. All right, whew, that's saying a whole lot. I'm going to pause for one second. I want to double check my West Rush and make sure I don't need my U.S. fighter there real quick. So, yes, yeah, so for him to stack Caucasus on G2, he's going to need to move everything in, use his transport to bring these two units in, or probably him and him, and um, as well as he's going to need really all six fighters and the Caucasus, or else he's giving me a, a potential shot at, at hitting them. Um, if he had a very costly shot for me as well, but I think I would have to take it, especially if I could take a first shot at them with the UK even. So the part that I, I've got to figure out is I want to move the Russian AA back over the top of my these guys. So I'm going to put these guys over, and I, I think I'm going to do it that way. His German planes and his UK plane, or excuse me, uh, Japan planes flying over don't take a pot shot at him. It does make this a little dicey for him to be able to attack. That uh, it's not exactly what I'd like to see there, but we're going to. Give it to him, I think. <laughs> so, we'll see if he if he if he takes it. He he. It sounds like he might be one that takes that kind of battle, though, which could make this game be very interesting very quickly. All right, I think that's all that is for it for our attack. So. Okay, come on, fighter, do your job. Thank you. <sighs> well, I'd rather trade them one for one, but man, I... <sighs> oh well, we got them. We'll just have to be happy with that, I guess. So, I'm here. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, five. Seven. There we go. So, here gets me one, two, three, four, five, six. I can get to Australia if I want to for challenging this. Here goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Or one, two, three, four, five. Oh, should be fine. One, two, three, four, five, six landing back on one of those. So we'll have both those zones covered. And also go to here. One, two, three, four, five. We got those zones covered. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I like it better here. How are we as far as his air? He does not have any German bombers that can reach there. Japan, one, two, three, four, five, six, with Germany coming in there. So down 
here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think we're just gonna come on here. <clears throat> We're going to be safe. I don't want to give him any easy shots with the bomber. So, it's one of those two, and it's really kind of half dozen, one, six the other. All right, I think everything else we've got set up. I like keeping my guys in here in case I bring a transport back, or I can come over here with the transport build. The one downfall of retreating from Ukraine is I only had 26. So I have to do a 2-6 instead of a 4-4. Four, four, and 4-4 four, four would have made this a much better dead zone. But beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. I think I actually want to attack anything. Because it's so tight, West Russia is so tight, I don't even think I want to do the shot on Belarusia, which, you know, very well could be one-on-one. -on -one. Um, let's see, so he'd have... I'm putting this in the calculator real quick just to double-check myself, because I feel like I should be able to at least take that shot with one infantry. But 13... Nine tanks, six fighters. We have an AA. If we sent him, we would have three, eight, twelve infantry, two artilleries, six tanks, two fighters, and a partridge and a pear tree. All right. Oh wait, no, four fighters. Sorry. I was like, wait a second, that's not looking good. Four fighters, there we go. That's still pretty decent odds for me. I want 13, 9, 6 fighters, 10, oh wait, it would be 11, wouldn't it? It would be 8, 9, 10, 11 infantry, not 12 infantry. Yeah, and that starts to turn into a f very even flit, split 50-50, which is favorable for Germany in a KJF, so we're not going to even bother doing that attack. Because I'm going to risk putting the AA up, up there, and that kind of made the difference. If I moved the AA up here, I would have been in better shape, but... So I think I want to leave him here, make him use a transport this direction, um, especially with my forces sitting here, because um, he's got to respect this fighter, three fighters, you know, seven units that could attack there. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, if he doesn't put any fighters back. So we're really trying to make him stretch these fighters out, if at all possible. Um, so yeah, we're going to leave that guy there so he can't just walk right into it. 
We're, we are gonna march back. Although I think we leave one back again to be annoying that I could always pop back, pop around a little bit, or um, do whatever. So we're gonna leave one kind of hanging back a little. I ain't gonna lie, it makes me nervous leaving that just so wide open. I feel much more comfortable if I was doing a KGF and just tearing him up over on this side. I was on my uh, league game with Intex. He he got over here and he stacked here early with Germany, but I've been just chewing away at him on the backside, so I think I'm going to end up pulling out a win in that game. But All right, so here's the situation. So again, you know, yes, I do not support a KJF North route. I support a KJF North early round one or two to allow the UK fleet to get built and then work on getting them together down here on the money islands. So this is all about making him have to decide where to go with his Japan fleet and Navy Air, Air Force because he wants to put them over here. But I'm going to make it very tight and very sweaty for these guys really quickly. So, all right, there we go. Long video, I apologize, but I thought it was a good one. All right, guys, so this game is going to be a fast game, and unfortunately, it's quickly turned its head on me. He took the battle that I uh, was hoping he wouldn't take. He attacked West Russia, and he had some success there. So, uh, just to show... I did give him a better battle than I would have wanted to. Uh, this is what I gave him. You know, I was giving him a toss-up at a slight negative. I was hoping that the AA would distract him. And the big difference is my moving the second AA to Kazakh instead of to West Russia. Um, because I wanted to protect those infant or protect that bomber. But uh, I wish I hadn't now. Hindsight is what it is because if I had that, that second AA which was my initial plan when I moved my UK fighters there that was my initial plan was to have the second AA there I don't think he would have attacked here right I don't think I don't know I myself I probably wouldn't have attacked at this at this level if I was Axis um, you know against a uh, a top 10 player I'm willing to give a 50-50 in essence, as that, that a negative, slightly negative value to them, you know, more often than not, I'm going to do well. Unfortunately, he ended up getting this result right here. So it wasn't like way above average, but he's got six fighters living. Um, minus 96 versus my minus 125 and puts me on my heels and in deep trouble, especially against the tank rush. So, we're going to have to be super aggressive, which means we are going to have to take DEI on UK3, and we're going to have to, we're going to push the, probably end up pushing the US fleet up faster to try to get to here by four. Um, I mean, the good news is at the very least, we're going to be there by five, and I believe we can hold this. He'll have, his best shot's going to be G4. Um, if he goes for it, he could have a decent shot at G4 at a significant negative value, but taking it. If he doesn't take it G4, then I th can probably give him a 40-50% on G5. And if I can if I can make it to G6, if I can survive to G6, that's my whole goal, then I have a, a low chance. He's still going to be at advantage. G7, if I make it to G7, I'm, I'm pretty stoked that uh I, I feel like we can make a game of it if i can survive to g7 i just don't know if i can survive to g7 unfortunately but we're going to do the best we can out of it and see what we can do but i i am just you know this is all just going to be you know he's going to get through india so my goal is to start to control you know to start the defense of africa up and be able to stop him at India at Burma. If I can hold Burma, if I can hold Burma Yunnan and keep Africa a battle at the, you know, at this, these three, at the arch here, 
then uh, I'll have a shot in the long, long game, which we won't be able to finish a long, long game, unfortunately, but at least I won't lose, I guess. So that's what I'm playing for. <laughs> I don't know if the game still carry over, if a ranked game carries over to unranked, and if he'd continue playing or not. But we'll see. But my only chance is to make this a long, long game at this point. I'm not going to win on a fast game like I was hoping for. All right. So we are still going to go ahead and stack our season 35. We're going to attack Japan very aggressively. Like I said, we're going to have to take low odd shot in all reality. So we're just going to go for it. Unfortunately, it does mean I had to spy a fighter in there to make the fourth fighter. I could have bought a destroyer and done it with three fighters, but I want the fourth fighter to be able to fly back to Moscow. So we're going with a fighter. We're going one destroyer and carrier all going into India. Since we're going to be... losing this anyways we're gonna do what we can the good news is he didn't take Burma so I don't have to expend any units on that now I could take a coastal territory um, since all his fighters are back he'd wipe it you know I could put a cruiser destroyer there right um, I could take well, no, I can't. I, I could take here and land here, but he's going to wipe me with his five fighters. I land here. He's going to wipe me with the five fighters. So I'm going to be very, very risky for the sea lion, which I realize I'm being risky for the sea lion, but I'm just going to have to be risky for the sea lion. And uh, I'm going to leave my cruiser there. So if he wants to take a shot at my cruiser, he can, which I don't think he will. But that at least the cruiser will be helping dead zone C zone five. And I'll have my two bombers still alive. So I... I, I, I should be dead zoning him building something there but I'm gonna be losing units through here we're gonna bring them on down to Africa so it's gonna be tight 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 I did have the opportunity two subs a fighter and a bomber here um, I didn't even really look at that to be perfectly honest I know it's at a disadvantage, but how much of a disadvantage is it worth, you know, at this point where we're looking for anything that could be a, a chance? So we could have fighter, bomber, two subs versus carrier, destroyer, dest what are our odds on that? No, they're not great. 23% odds at an overall even value. I don't know, that's almost, shoot, it's almost worth taking a shot. The problem is, is if I don't win it, then I'm probably gonna give him, if I get worse than expected, I'm probably gonna give him a shot. And I never really like attacking a battleship knowing I'm probably not gonna kill it and let it get its hit, hit point back. So I'm gonna stick with my original plan because I am gonna be dead zoning 36 in my opinion, so. He's not going to be able to move down to 36, in my opinion. Alright. Not what I was hoping to open my game to. The good news is my other game, the player anonymized after just completely destroying me with dice. Uh, he, he was a low silver placement game and uh, he must have done poorly in his other games because he rage quit but it wasn't because the game he was playing against me he was actually had me on my heels to be honest uh, again dice are just crazy there all right here we go really could use the take here not just the kill but the kill and take save those Russian and US infantry as much as we can Happy for that. Alright, let's 
see, he's got one, two, three. Just a bomber that can reach there. Oops, that's not right. Okay, we're gonna leave the cruiser there. He can take a 1v1 if he wants. I'm fine with that. it so one other thing I think he's just happy with what he's done I mean or he's just gonna concede Africa for this time but <clears throat> his transport doesn't have anybody in Italy to pick up so he either can take guys from here to clean this up and try and take Africa and slow his march here, or he can grab guys from here to just accelerate up here. I think he grabs from here and accelerates up here and concedes Africa and then comes back to it later. That's what I would do, but we'll see what he does, because I'm going to be moving my fighter, so he'll actually have a battleship transport, you know, infantry artillery or infantry tank that he could grab and go into here and move these guys in and clear both of these. Um, I don't know. Maybe he'll take that. So, you know, I mean, the Pacific is a good is a position where I want. I'm sure he's going to be come do a completely defensive build um, and bring his fighters back and whatnot. And so it's going to be hard to root them out. But again, my main goal normally my goal is to be in these islands by five. But we're going to go ahead and take DEI next turn with a bomber and uh, sacrifice a transport if I need to, because we just got to shut them down quickly. Depending on what he does, we may even try a full UK reverse, where UK takes all the islands and the US starts pumping ships over here. I don't like that, but when you get desperate, you gotta do desperate things. Okay, so for uh, US2, I did have to do a business trip, so I was flying all day for a couple days. So I had to take a turn on my super old laptop I can't use my work laptop it doesn't <laughs> they got it encrypted uh, but uh, my super old laptop took a couple pictures from it then I did a couple finished up my Russian turn on my phone while on the plane and tried to take some screenshots of it so basically I just got some still shots to go through for you so uh, US2 this is what um, the European Sea looks before my turn here so this is before I go US2 and Russia 3 and jumping over to the Pacific. This is what the Pacific looks like. He did move his Japan fleet up into 62. Pretty much just kind of giving these guys free way down here. He didn't even bother trying to threaten them. He is pushing his units, his Japan ground units on up through the, uh, the midland there. I do have little more zoomed in picture here where you can see the numbers a little closer as far as what we got so when I was looking at this I wanted to get to 59 I knew that what I didn't know uh, what I debated back and forth on was coming here I do have a fighter that can fly from Australia that killed that sub down there he'll meet these guys up here so we will have all four fighters is I could just put everybody in 59 and let him have kind of a I want to say it was like a 50 or 60% shot on my fleet. 
but of course that would pretty much wipe him out plus I'd have my bill coming in 56 and my UK guys so that is one of the uh, ideas that I played with Let's see my only attack during the US turn and Russia turn for that matter was attacking Iwo Jima here won that without any losses so here's my fighter flying up decided to move everybody in I did decide to go ahead and use a destroyer block and put one destroyer in here because he already shown attacking West Russia that he was perfectly comfortable um, taking the 50 50 shots so I went ahead and put the destroyer block in there I hate using destroyer blocks but um, you know I just felt like I needed to at this time uh, I did do my calculations and it did figure out I will be able to stack Caucasus at least so that's a nice and then of course we're sending my transports back grabbing one unit one man two AAs I'm sending one man back where I built a transport so we're gonna be putting a transport down here Russia didn't do any attacks so this is just non-combat put one guy back into West Russia, moved everybody down to Caucasus to stack that, and moving people over. And this is what the uh, European Asian looks after Russia turn. So this is G3, started G3. So I was able to stack Caucasus, which is nice. So at least we didn't have to trade that for another turn. And here's what Africa looks like. Um, I should have been over here at this point. I just made a little goof there. But in any case, let's see Africa. You can see my little screenshots from my phone here. <laughs> Wasn't sure how well they would turn out or not. It's kind of hard to see on my phone. But uh, unfortunately, I think that's all, that, all I got. I don't have a whole lot of uh, imagery for everything else. Um, You'll see when I go to play my UK three turn what you know a better picture of everything in there so uh, not a lot to say on this turn uh, it was just really more just kind of positioning getting things into to place in particular over here uh, trying to get ourselves set up so that we can double up to the Philippines come UK three I already kind of knew I was gonna be coming over here or excuse me UK three gonna come to DEI and then uh, Philippines US 3 UK 4 yeah all right that's the end of this turn and again we should be back live hopefully next turn all right so here we are back live uh, we got some good news some not a good news so maybe some good news <clears throat> any case so Germany bought six tanks which isn't surprising he's already shown his hand he's going heavy tanks right we, we knew this so uh, six tanks two infantry bought he attacked arch with an entry five didn't take it um let's back and forth on libya which i should have had all these guys sitting in libya this turn i don't know what i was thinking i don't know why i did that but then when it became us's turn then it was too late because he did have that stack of fighters here but i would gladly had all of that versus you know having to bring a stack of fighters and bring them down here these guys should have been in libya last turn they're going to be in libya this turn and he hung out here so one thing of note right off the bat trans transport has no one to transport forward this way other than taking guys or no one to bring down to Egypt I mean all he can do is take guys from here up to the front line to pressure Russia better which he may that may be the smart move because I'm kind of keeping Egypt in a, a bit of a dead zone and I'm gonna move these guys up so I think that's probably what he'll do next turn because um, I'm gonna have to abandon Caucasus of course so he may move all these guys in bring them up so that he can be building here so I do think 
the good news is he, he can't take us on g4 all right we got enough to come back and hold g4 i'm actually pretty confident he can't take us in g5 g6 is going to depend if, if he takes this in g5 and stacks it then he'll be able to or excuse me in g4 then he'll be able to build four more units in g5 and this stack is going to go four five right and so then if he's got seven plus four eleven units coming in on g5 then g6 is going to start looking very questionable plus he's pushing japan kind of heavy up here too to be able to you know do a little one two ish type thing in there so g6 is where i'm thinking we're looking very questionable at the moment i'm going to start just focusing on getting as many units up to moscow as i can during the next several turns so again g6 means uk5 is the last turn that i'll have well to move people in so uk4 is the last purchase phase so that i can move them uk5 in from india or uh, uk if they're in a place they can and then yeah so uk3 uk4 are the last chances for me buying fighters to get in here to stop a g6 timing as what all that's i was trying to get to there now the other side of that is over here we're going to move into dei so we're going to have our fleets both in range of either 61 or 48 we're going to stack one of these two with the combined uk us not sure which one yet but uh if it's 61 that i go to on us3 then us4 planes can make it in there to help g5 so that that kind of just talking that out kind of makes it sound like g3 g4 i mean excuse me us3 us4 us5 we fly fighters into moscow to try to help this kind of six timing. So G6 is going to be the questionable moment. So, so there we go. That's, that's that little bit. So purchases, we're buying one infantry, three fighters. We're going to put two of them down here that can easily fly in. We're going to put one up here. I'm going to fly one of these fighters back into Moscow so that those two fighters could combine for a carrier destroyer build possibly in uk4 plus cruiser destroyer so that we can then finally get a uk fleet up and running i do want to do a double quick count so we got surface ships two four five plus three would be eight you'd have six fighters and a bomber that can reach there so we should be good there as well in between the fighters and the bomber we're going to take out dei again do i like taking dei with uk no but this is a game that we've got to go fast and we're just gonna to have to make do with what we can do um let's see the other thing i forgot that i was going to check i just want to double check my dead zone of egypt if we've got say oh those two so we would have two four infantry artillery uh not that fighter but we'll have one two three five fighters and two bombers that could come at them and we should still be sitting pretty high there yeah we're all right there Is what I'm thinking about. I think I'm going to move the tank to Moscow as well while I can. And he should still be okay. If I've got my transport alive, he can come back with two infantry. We'll leave these guys here. So I'm going to move back what I can. Yeah, I think we're still sitting okay here. So the other part I got to keep an eye on is him being in Japan, bringing his Japan fleet down to 36 to drop these guys in. 
um, because if he does it this turn, all U.S. will be able to do is four fighters and a bomber, and then we got all this U.K., which may be enough to take him out. I haven't done the math on that. Um, but if that happens, I'd rather Japan take an India than Germany, ultimately, anyway, so... I won't be super heartbroken, I guess. Go cruiser. Much as I'd like to do something with this bomber, <laughs> we're not. I am going to keep him over in this zone, though, because from here, he's helping me prevent the sea line, right? I got my cruiser holding on. I got one, two, three, four with my bomber, five, six, hanging in there. Um, and I'm going to be putting a fighter up here, so, and a fighter here. So we'll have two fighters, the bomber, and the cruiser to help keep. C zone 5 dead zone from a possible, you know, the sea line situation. All right, I think that's all the attacks I got. Oh, oh wait. That's right. Can't do that. Could go that way with him too, but I think I'm gonna save him. I might use it for. I might do that with a U.S. or a Russia guy actually, or a U.S. guy. I'm gonna do it with the U.K. I didn't realize that U.K. He left Ukraine wide open there actually. Not that we can stack or anything, but we can certainly take the money. All right, I think that's all the attacks. Don't think I got anything else I can do attack wise here. I thought the cruiser would hit on one of those times I don't really need it to hit. Are you kidding me? Oh. My. Word. I've got nothing else I can say. Alright. I am going to pause this video why I go take a scream break real quick. Uh, okay. Can't believe I'm going to do this. But if I take DEI right now, then that's four IPC less for Japan, four positive for UK. That's an eight IPC swing just in of itself. Which, yes, the bomber's 12, but that's four less for Japan now in the early game, which is just very important for us being able to try to crumble him, especially since he's actually going to get like five IPC for Japan and other territories when he attacks. And I was double checking that the bomber is not needed to dead zone C zone 36. So, there's that. But we have got to take this without him getting a hit back.
Poof. Small, small, small blessing there. But we'll take blessings. We like blessings. We'll ignore the curse that happened right before the blessing. Oh, come on. Of course she did. So like I said, the good news is, although he could come and drop eight units here and take India the next turn, season 36 is going to be dead zoned. So he'd lose all his transports and whatever he puts in there. So that's the good news. Um, so instead, he could drop them in season 61, and I'm going to clamp down pretty hard. He's got to use blockers, you know, use his destroyer and or build a destroyer here and put a destroyer here, you know, hoping his destroyer wins here. Or he could, if if I get a hit back, he'd have to use a cruiser as a blocker and a destroyer as a block. So yeah, you see what I'm saying? There's a at the very least, he has to use either his destroyer or his cruiser and build one to protect them. And then I'll move everybody into the Philippines. And then he's going to be kind of getting squished one way or the other. But very disappointing result overall. Let's see, is two fighters and a cruiser enough to starve off? I mean, he doesn't, I mean, he's not going to go for a sea line, right? I don't think he's going to go for a sea line. The thing is, is if I put him here, one, two, three, four, five, six, he can help threaten sea zone 60. Can't really bring these guys any closer than what I am doing. Well... Bring the subs up to here and again help threaten C zone 60. Because that's one of the things he can do. He can build six subs and move this whole thing to 60. <clears throat> and I doubt I have enough, even with the two subs and what I'm doing here. To dead zone 60. I haven't really calked it out, but I'm guessing I don't have enough there. All right, so I'm wanting to keep I said if he wants to go here, he can go there and I'll have to kill whatever he's got. Otherwise, all he can do is move one in there and I'm putting another infantry here. So we'll have our two infantry there. We'll move back what we can to help trading up here. So this also gives me the opportunity to grab one infantry, grab one, come into here, hit Egypt in case, you know, he could do hit Egypt and use his battleship transport to hit TJ and take both of these. So I'd have two plus tanks, and then I'd also have these three and my air that could hit TJ. So it just helps kind of make sure that we keep this nice and firm and snug. I am going to slide my cruiser down so he could hit the cruiser. One. Oh, wait, no, he can't. Oh, what am I thinking? One, two. I was thinking he was in Finland. Well, dang. I don't need to move my cruiser at all. I actually go ahead and just slide him on up there, right? <clears throat> so that at least we can put a little bit of uh, pressure on here. Right, one, two, three, one, two, three. I don't know why I was thinking he could. Ugh. My mind was thinking Finland. All right, well, that's nice, at least. I mean, I guess I, we also could come back and grab him if we wanted to. 
but I like put, go ahead and putting the pressure, low pressure on Corellia so he can't just leave it abandoned. All right, there we go. And a turn. All right. So I'm going to do some rehashing, um, some picking back up, and then uh, get us back on square here. So. I'm just going to flat out say the reality is this has not been the game play that I should have played. Um, not my best game. I definitely have made some mistakes. Still in it as it is. Um, it's going to be interesting. I'm definitely behind the eight ball. But uh, there's been... I've already made... You know, We're just getting ready to start US3. And I, I can say I've made two blunders and one, one mistake. I'm going to call it a mistake. Um, I'm still not 100% against my choice, but the the first blunder uh, was the US-1 bit. Um, if you watch the YouTube video, the, the first uh, video of this um, particular game, uh, Rudman in there mentioned about the fact that I could have gone to the uh, Solomons in round, round two, and he is correct. I'm going to walk through that in just a second. The second, or the, the mistake I made or what I feel I made was putting that um, AA in, in Kaza instead of West Russia. I, I think I could have disrupted him, discouraged him from attacking West Russia if I had put that second AA in there and he wouldn't have attacked. It would have left me with three infantry and a bomber and I think he had his six fighters or five fighters, six fighters that could have hit it. And you know, I was worried about protecting the bomber. Uh, I, I don't know that... I, I, I don't know him well enough. I don't think that's the battle they would have taken even without the AA. And then I would have been able to move my bomber. And then, yes, he could have used his Japan Air Force that he had sitting down here to come and wipe out the three infantry. But, you know, I think the AA should have been better. So that's my mistake. I, I, I liked having it there because I really wanted to protect that bomber for the setup of trying to kill the battleship, which obviously all went to kaputs anyways because he was able to kill the UK fighters. So hindsight it was a mistake i should have had it in there he probably wouldn't have attacked west russia then or maybe he would if i still don't know that that answer yet uh the third one was probably in the last round you guys are probably saying what in the world are you talking about uh dead zoning c zone 36 because i don't have c zone 36 dead zoned I, I don't even know what i was looking at to be honest i mean my my i it was just a straight up blunder um so this puts us in a tough position. I'm going to talk about a current position, but I do want to go back to that that round one, US one turn. And you got to use your memory a little bit. I didn't pull out the old cues, but that's where, you know, I did my UK twist <clears throat> and it, it was perfect, right? He put his fleet in 61 with a battleship carrier in 60, which meant I was going to be able to drop a fleet in 35 without having to use my cruiser as a block. And we were, we were set. I am so used to normally when I when I'm playing the uh, I would say high level players, what I've run into is they place their units more in a position. They'll, they'll take out um, Pearl, and so then they don't have to protect these guys, and they'll bring everything to 61, and they'll have C zone 35 dead zoned on UK2, so I can't do a UK2 drop. That's what I'm not used to facing. And so based on that, I always go US-1 up to Alaska, where I'm now threatening you know, the, the, the backside of the mainland as well as here. And they have to make a decision. Do they stay down here to dead zone India, or do they come up here to defend versus um, the northern Alaska route? That's the reason I did US-1 going up there. That's my usual. And even though I sat there and I said I 
I've already got the India drop. I went into auto mode and just did my US one here. I didn't need to go up there. I did not need to draw the Japan Navy up. I could have done the traditional come down to Solomon's, had the UK drop in UK two, and then I would have already been bam, bam coming in here. And there's there some, f f you know, finer points of the play um, it, within that. Uh, but it, it definitely was should have been there and that would have been a much better position than what I'm in right now um, so I, I gotta give the, the shout out that that would have been the smart way to play I get into auto clicking or auto play and even though I, I knew it I just auto played us1 um, instead of looking at the situation I had and then like I said I, I don't even know what I was looking at during UK3 my my brain just I have no idea. I could have sworn I had this dead zoned. I don't know what numbers I was looking at, but this is definitely not dead zoned. Even if I'd, I hadn't lost that bomber to take DEI, this still wasn't dead zoned. So I'm not really sure. I, I, too many games. I'm, I'm putting it on brain fatigue. I'm, you know, I had four games going. Um, I'm a, normally a one to two game at a time player. One of those games against Intex and his Axis and his tank rush. Um, a game against Elric, this game, and another ranked game. Now, the good news is, Intex game's over. I did win that game. Uh, it was a great, great game. That would have been that would have been a great one to film as far as defending a tank rush and doing KGF, which I know I got a a number of new viewers probably haven't heard me say KGF killed Germany first is the more consistent way to win a game, and it is the way I normally would go against a tank rush kill Japan first which is what I'm attempting here is just the funner direction in my opinion so I like to play this route just because I, I find it interesting and normally I'm a really acute and make good <laughs> Navy moves in this case not so much so now we just got to look at the situation in front of us because we got to we, we got to go here so Germany's going to hold on G4 and G5 I'm pretty confident about that that's one positive pretty confident germany six he's going to be able to take moscow i'm going to do everything i can i'm going to get as many fighters as i can within range on turn four so that turn five they can dump into moscow to try to protect it but i i just don't see it being a possibility with him continuing to build tanks he'll be able to build like seven tanks this next turn and and because i haven't been able to get a uk you know, an Atlantic fleet going here, he's really got no no reason to build infantry. That's why it's it's so barren back here. Now, that may turn to my advantage later in the game. We're going to see. Um, so, this is probably going to fall G6, probably. If I can hold on to it G6, that'd be fantastic, but I'm just, I'm just guessing it's going to fall G6. He's going to push his... Germans up to Egypt. He may even try using the transport to do an Egypt TJ double take at one shot uh, Because he knows he's got me pressed now because of Japan here I'm in a tight situation. I suspect when I move these guys up He's gonna come down to Caucasus. He's gonna stack Caucasus on G4 So he's gonna have a stack here. He's gonna have Germans here. He's gonna have Japan here Whatever's in UK is alive here is in a pickle They're they're, they're in a conundrum so Germany's going to break through into Africa. So I need to be prepping for that already, which uh, I've been doing this more and more often. I just I've kept the the US two transports, Atlantic transports over here and I just start working them into Africa from the beginning and we're going to bring over a couple more units. And so what we're going to do this turn is we're going to bring them down here, the uh, two AAs and an infantry. I'm going to keep back my you know units here if he wants to step back with germany to hit these guys fantastic i'd love him to then i can just take out the germans but i don't think he's going to go forward from here he goes here g4 my two transports can come down here drop my tank artillery a couple infantry on us4 and then hopefully i'll be able to contain what he's got going on here US-3, I'm going to take my bomber over here, but US-4, I can bring it back to Australia no matter what happens over here and still be able to threaten here. Well, not no matter. I guess he could... There's the possibility he brings his Japan this way, which could be a problem. 
so lots of different angles kind of coming around here um, one of the things that we're gonna just vaguely loosely keep my eye on because I would be obtuse not to is a potential victory allied victory city play here so like I said uh, I'm gonna bring these two here which means these guys are open I've got this guy here so if he abandons this well enough there's a possibility I could get into Corellia probably not but I need four more right so there's a good chance I'd be able to take these two because he's just blitzing all out that means there's these two which I'm hoping to take Philippines this turn which means this guy could potentially have an opening for me with US to attack while taking these guys as well He's such a high level player, I doubt he's going to give me that opportunity. But against lower level players, I almost guarantee you, I take this US 3. If I have a guy survive, they won't think about protecting here. And I'll have my two subs or two transports here where I can grab these two. And I'll grab that guy. And because they don't get the warning saying you're about to lose, a lot of people will miss it. And then bam, we get a victory city win. I'd love to have that happen in this game. I don't think that's going to happen, but that's all the kind of the stuff that's going through my mind. So now we got to figure out what to do about this situation. I really want India to be able to build more fighters for a couple more rounds to pump into Moscow because I don't have a carrier pump. So any fighters built here have to be built, fly to Iceland, and then get over here. So it's too slow to get here. Whereas India, they built and fly in. So, I really want to defend this, which I can, and my ultimate decision is that I am going to. Um, with with that, I can't. I, I got to take away his bombardment, so I need to use a destroyer in C zone thirty five. Plus, I don't want them go all going straight to Africa yet, because that's going to be a headache anyways when they do. Um, and that's going to be my this is this is going to be these guys here is going to be my achilles heel the rest of this game and you can mark my words now that this fleet and these units assuming he does what i think he'll do will be my achilles heel going forward and probably be the my demise to be honest so i am going to be able to defend india i'm going to be able to get down to like a 35 percent shot for him if he sent all his fighters in and I don't think he's going to want to do that. Well, I know he's not going to want to, well, okay. I shouldn't say that. I don't think he's going to want to do that, <laughs> but Germany's going to be coming right in and Germany getting India is unfortunate. I'd rather Japan take it, but I, I think Germany's going to get India. Um, my goals is I need to get the Philippines now. So us three is great job, Philippine, you know, getting UK, getting, DEI and Philippines in three is great. He probably going to take DEI or he can take DEI back, um, which actually would be a, not a bad thing for me if I just if I'm able to turn around and get these retaken quickly with the U.S. so that they're all U.S. I kind of would prefer it that way. Um, but the other thing is, I could just send all my UK and all my U.S. and stack C748 and take this, right? That's the well, I won't say it's a smart play. That's the, the obvious play. However, what if, if I do that, he keeps building his his ground here, and I he's I, ground Japan ground into the mainland is tough when you get into the late game of KJF. We really don't want them. So, if he then takes his entire fleet back to Sea Zone 62, he can leave his destroyer in 61, build a destroyer in 60. He could build a carrier and a fighter. He'll have four carriers, eight fighters, two battleships sitting up here in C Zone 62 with a double block. Now the US could kill one, but there's not enough UK living to take on that fleet. So then he pumps eight more guys over, builds some, some more guys. He'll be able to then go up towards US or pump more guys in this way or this way. So I really don't want him getting his fleet back to Japan. This is one of the nice things about where I'm sitting is 
I need to find a way to prevent him from getting any more C builds out of 60 and 62. If J3 was his last, well, he didn't build a C build in J3, I guess. But, you know, if, if he's not getting any more ship builds, then that's fantastic. And that's what I want to do. You know, the last build he would have is that carrier that he built. Uh, whatever round that was. I think that was J2. Um, but that's not easily done, as you're going to see. The best strategy that I wanted is to move my battleship two carriers, four fighters in here, use a destroyer block of my own here, and then put everything else into this. And that'll give me enough sitting here, plus these guys coming over to dead zone 60 and 62. But that would mean... I would have a cruiser and two infantry to take Philippines, which is not the odds that I want to have. Um, so as such, I need to move a carrier so I can use two fighters on the Philippines into season 48. But in essence, that is what we're going to be looking at. And when I finish up my move, I'm going to describe my, my play with these guys, I actually kind of like what it, what's happening with these guys. It's kind of an interesting play, so we're going to pull that up here in just a second. Um, first things first, to make all this happen, I'm not super happy with this play, but it, ultimately it's going to play off anyways. Um, just because I got a feeling he's, he's obviously more of an airborne player. He's not built any subs, so he's not a sub-spam KJF defense. He's a air and land KJF defense. So I'm going to take out the land component, hopefully, this, this turn. But I'm going to build a carrier, two fighters, off the coast here, because they can one, two, three, four. Those fighters can immediately be helping dead zone these guys, um, as well as even 61. So the fighters built in 56 are immediately helping me put pressure on these. Um, Wait, not, not quite that far, right? Wait, one, two, three. Yeah, there and the Philippines. Yeah, okay. My mind is going a little backwards on me. And they can even actually reach, you know, one, two, three, four. They can actually even reach all the way down to here if I needed them to. So these fighters I build here immediately get to have play on here. And like I said, US-4, my goal is to get as many fighters hopefully into C-Zone 61 or India that can then head to Moscow on five as possible. So building them here three, they can jump over to here to four possibly, and then five into Moscow. So that's where my build's going. I had a little bit extra. I'm going to build an infantry um, to have over here to eventually for these guys to keep trying to pick up and pump back and forth. Now, unfortunately, again, just because of how all the I did all I did pull out the calculators on this one, I, I've got to leave the battleship and um, cruiser back in season sixty with a destroyer with a carrier because he's got seven fighters that could hit it, and that's going to be a toss up as is. Um, so I can't use any of the bombardments. I've got to win this. I've got to take the Philippines. I got to hold this C zone. It's it's going to be tight. It's going to be battly, but we're going to do everything we can. Um, let's see over here. Bomber I'm taking over, I need them over here in the Solomon, so is that, that's not Solomon's, um, Iwo Jima, I'm sorry. My mouth talks without my brain thinking sometimes. Do I want to go ahead and take a crack on the Kazakh guy and get in, or just turtle, turtle, turtle? Or I could even take in here. Or a little of both, right? Go one here, one here. I 
think we're going to go ahead and do this. I, I need to whittle Japan down. I, I feel pretty good about four or five, and I, I, like I said, I'm already pretty confident that we're not going to be able to stay six. So. That'll be our attacks, right? I am worried. I, I stared at this board way too long, and when you start looking at a board too long, you, your mind gets stuck in a train of thought, and sometimes you just miss the obvious, so there's a little bit of that concern going on. Hit, hit, hit. Whiff, whiff, whiff. Ah. Dang it. Come on, we need a hit and take, no hit back. Okay, good. No hit back, five? Yes! All right, whew. Okay. Need a another hit and no take back. Or no hit back, excuse me. All right, Whew. a little, little bit of luck on my side this this round. I'll take it. Oh, shoot, that's not where I want you to go. I do not need you up there this turn. Actually, gonna bring you down this way. So this is going to be the interesting play I'm going to talk a little bit more about. Now getting him down there helps the dead zone here. Because one, two, three, four, I couldn't get back to the Philippines. One, two, three, four. Here I could, but I couldn't get to C zone 62 with a landing site. So I wanted to get him over here for one, two, three, four, five, six. So yes, five versus four, he's got the opportunity plus the battleship if he wanted to, but this is something I do gotta watch out for is he could come back this way for a sea lion threat. I mean, we could block it, but then we gotta defend it. triple checking things making sure I'm not overlooking something so we should have a carrier battleship destroyer cruiser so destroyer cruiser battleship carrier group good I'm gonna take there good so the good news too is I'm down to just this game and my game versus Elric I think I may have mentioned so my hopefully I can focus a little bit more and see if we can't scavenge this game still it's going to be interesting. I'll, I'll be very happy if I'm able to pull this game back off after, you know, this one isn't a uh, recover from dice mode, because there hasn't been any bad dicings. It's a uh, recover from my own stupidity mode. All right. All right, so let's talk about this stuff just a little bit, right? So he does have seven fighters. These fighters could go one, two, three, and hit these four destroyers. But for that to be a legal move, he has to take out 
he has to attempt to take out the destroyer and the sea zone 60 fleet in order to do that so at the very least he has to send a destroyer versus this and at least one fighter up against the sea zone 60 and so then that would leave him six fighters which he could go into but he's not gonna be able to move his fighter his carriers to catch him right because they're they're on set three so the only way they're gonna be able to land is if he can move his carriers into c-zone 60 so he'd have to take c-zone 60 to land them so if he wants to send four fighters that are all gonna die plus have to sacrifice a fighter to c-zone 60 just to kill that i'm fine with that so i actually these guys are actually kind of safe unless i'm missing something which lord knows i can't be missing something um we'll see now here's the hard part this battle if he sends all seven of his fighters into c zone 60 this is a 50 50 toss up and i had to make it so fighters go before carriers in this one this battle here when i bring in the rest of my uh, UK folks into here becomes fairly solid, actually. I, I should say we'll, we should be okay here, even with all of this. Um, it's like a 60% defense, positive defense or something like that. But I really need this to be carriers before fighters to make that defense the most effective. So I made the UK defense profile fighters before carriers and the US Excuse me, U.S. fighters before carriers, U.K. carriers before fighters. Blech. I better double check I did that right. Yeah, U.K. is full defense. U.S. has to be fighter before carrier. Because otherwise, if it does, he could hit here and then retreat, and then my fighters die. Now, um, in this one, I just need max defense. In any case... We're going to see how this goes. If this works for dead zoning here, so he then has to do something else. Um, hopefully, we're going to load this up to uh, max defense. And it, like I said, I think it gives him a 35% chance for the Japan. So then he has to make a decision. He can't stay here because I'll have the dead zone really of all the fleets here hopefully so he's gonna have to go somewhere with these guys and uh, use blockers if need be now that's where it's gonna be a headache is if he takes these four and he comes down and brings four transports worth of guys down here and then into the Atlantic that's gonna be a headache so All right, that was a U.S. turn. I guess I do got to take my Russia turn, don't I? You know, I talked about having four held pretty well, and I'm now I'm realizing I'm. <laughs> Baiting my own self. Do I really have it held? Uh, 18, 22, 23, 24. Two artillery tank, and I got the fighter in there too. Yeah, we're good. Okay, started to uh, started to worry and question myself a little bit there. Uh, combat, I don't think we're going to do any combat. No, nope, we're not doing combat. <sighs> I'm sitting here debating whether I should plug him up here just to prevent the tank blitz and then back. But this also prevents the UK, I mean, Japan getting extra points, and I'm wanting to choke off UK or Japan as quickly as possible. 
you know, I, I think I am going to make Germany. He's so low on infantry. I'd rather make him use infantry to uh, take that. All right, and I think that's it for this, for the Russia turn. So hopefully I can salvage this. I don't know. I may have shot myself in the foot too heavily. We'll see. All right, till next time. All right, so here we go. We got some good news, bad news again. <laughs> <laughs> tends to be my story uh, the bad news is he recognized the, the VC snipe on play and uh, stacked Italy here from my two US transports from being able to hit it um, I could do four versus his four and one and I think it's like an 11% chance or something like that and if I took it and I took UK took this one and I took that and he didn't protect Shanghai over here, then uh, we, we could have been able to pull off a victory. What I was hoping was to see him leave it completely open and then, you know, be sitting at seven of 10 and I was gonna, I wouldn't use a transport, UK transport to take anything. So we get to US, you know, Japan turn at seven of 10 and maybe he leaves that open and we take three freebies and get a win. Yeah, it, I, I will say I see it all the time in Platinum. I get wins like that all the time in Platinum. I wasn't necessarily expecting, as I said, you know, he's a top 10 player. I didn't expect him to fall fall asleep to it. Um, and like I said, most likely round five is my last chance for an allied VC win because round six, he's probably getting one of these two. And so it's going to become a much, much, much harder to pull off a VC snipe at that point. So any case i did want to bring up uh you know i'm gonna pause for a second i'm gonna pull this together real quick okay i know that was just a flash for you guys but uh i wanted to bring this over for those of you that were worrying about how i'm doing here so with my i, I tried to zoom it in just to my my summaries of round by round summaries and so this is my current game here uh, with Toadstum. Uh, remember, negative is good for me. Positive is good for him. This is, first column is number of units different. So I have four more, after round one, I had four more units on the board than he did. 45 IPC in my favor. Attack power, defense power, attack power in my favor, defense power in his. Total attack strength, for those of you that know my total TAS that I follow, and total defense strength. So, I pulled up another um, game, KJF, I did with the UK twist that I ended up winning. Um, it ended up being conceded in UK 10. Now this game, Moscow never fell. So that's a big reason. But if you look at the stats, these first three rounds, and unit count, I'm doing better. IPC value, I'm not doing as well. And uh, attack power, attack strength is about the same. You'll notice in this game, I, I made notes here, like UK took DEI on UK4, US took Philly on US4, and then US took Borneo and retook DEI on US5. Here in this game, UK took DEI on UK3, US took Philly on US3. So I'm, a, I'm actually a little bit faster paced on my island taking so far uh, in this game. Now, this game, again, I held on to Moscow, and that's the big reason um, that I was able to win that game. I set this one to the side. Now, this is the only other KGF game I've captured, a much more in depth game. And just for the. Uh, the notices here again. Um, I killed the J fleet on US 4. Again, here we go. UK took DEI on UK 4, Philly on US 3, and then took New Guinea and Borneo on US 4. And on this one, uh, UK held on DEI the whole game. 
here's the interesting part. I lost Moscow on G6 in this game. Again, it was another one that they took a shot on West Russia. I guess I need to stop offering it. They got very positive results. And so they were able to take Moscow on G6 and then India on G7. So, I mean, this, these two games tell me I need to work on that West Russia defense, I guess. Not giving a slightly negative odds because it appears Axis is willing to take that. But you'll see in this game, again, we look at how the first three rounds went comparatively speaking versus what we've done so far in this game. And again, unit count, I was actually 14 units behind in that game. IPC value, I was 30 behind. And you can see I'm doing better in this game against Toadstum than I was in the attack power and total attack strength statistics. Now, this game, I will tell you, it was a knockdown, drag out. I, I, they took India. I was able to firm up Burma and Yun, or Burma, uh, and uh, Thai, and trade Yunnan back and forth. And so it was a long time. But you can see I started building up valued, high value units. This is my navy for the most part, and bringing in uh, lots of transports as it was. And uh, you can see even when the game ended, uh, Axis, Axis ended up forfeiting on J16 when I had a 90% shot on Tokyo with US16. This is the competitive, com you know, the game where it's very competitive left and right, you know, Axis and Allies, it's, it's a long, drawn out game. This was an accelerated game because Moscow never fell and it wasn't going to fall at that point because I was able to reinforce it. So even though... This game has, I've made mistakes in this, this game against Toadstum. Um, we're not out of it yet. So, so like I said, the bad news is he protected Italy. Um, so the, the VC snipes pretty much off the table and I doubt he's gonna give me an option in round five either for that matter. So now the good news is to do that, he built six infantry, uh, throughout here and that limited his tank build to only two additional new tanks and a bomber he did build a bomber here so we gotta be mindful of that um but what that ultimately does is it gives me a glimmer of hope of holding on to g6 i mean just the tiniest glimmer it at the very least i can make it a very contested battle and make it a dicey battle for him or a high ipc loss value for him so it's 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 going to be interesting i'm, I'm going to say that um, but to do that i need to get max planes on the board that can fly to moscow as we talked about and if i can get seven planes up there for the g6 attack that includes him building four ground it includes these guys moving in it includes him using transporting two more infantry up to the front line and building three bombers um if i can do that if i can make it to that point and get seven planes here then it gives him a 60 percent shot on moscow which a lot of times in kgs i'm willing to give them that because it's a high negative value too um and i won't abandon and th they may or may not take that shot i don't know if i could get eight planes up there well then we're then we're talking about possibly holding at a, at a good number right so planes one two three four one of these planes has to fly off that gives me three fighters i can build here will give me seven planes seven fighters now us4 depending on what japan does is a possibility i can fly some of these fighters into range of moscow the next turn i'm not counting on that though um, because there's a number of things that can happen here if you really look and you do the crunching, I did dead zone 62. I dead zone 60, even if you wiped it and moved his fleet and built, I've got that dead zoned. 61's dead zone, 36 is dead zone. These guys are all dead zone. So really, he can go ahead and let me bang my fleets up against his, or he's going to bail out towards Africa to create headaches that way or 
take DEI and use a destroyer block in here. Um, possibly, I don't know, he may not have to use a destroyer block now that I look at it. Um, so, so we'll see what he decides. The other option he has is, even though the odds are going to be in my favor, and it would be a negative IP, fairly negative IPC value for Japan to do, he could go ahead and smash his six planes and his nine units into India and knock down the number of fighters I have that can fly back into here the next turn. Um, so that is a, a, a possibility. Um, I'm good against G5, but that would definitely give him G6 timing, but also that would pretty much neuter this fleet because they wouldn't have units to pick up and the fighters would be gone. So um, not sure his route yet. Uh, the other thing that comes onto the board is he saved a couple IPC. So he's got 49 right now. So, you know, look at my UK here. It's very thin. And so we got to really be respectful of the possibility of a sea lion. And if I'm building fighters down here instead of up here and I'm flying this fighter down, that's going to open it up even that much more of a possibility now. I'm hoping to fly this one U.S. fighter back up as long as he doesn't attack India, but, you know, I can't count on that. So, long story short, I'm going to have all three transports in range of the U.K. one way or another. And... Uh, We'll be ready to build eight units there next turn if we have to. And I believe, you know, he, with 49 IPC, he can build a carrier for 14 and then five transports. That's the fear. So I got to make it so that a carrier build alone is a bit scary for him. Or just defend against five transports, which... I still haven't fully decided, and I'm actually going to have to pause because I'm going. I'm debating my own decision again right now. Um, I'm going to bring the bomber up here, and I'm going to have the one fighter, so we got a bomber-fighter threat there. And I, I'm debating whether just to leave the cruiser here. I mean, he could take a shot at it with the, the bomber, but, you know, cruiser, bomber, fighter, almost guarantees he didn't need to do something more than just the the carrier. Um, I'm debating building a sub, actually. Um, that sub tips tips the, the table, and the sub doesn't have to worry about getting picked off. But I really would like to bring these guys down here to Morocco. So, all right, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna pull the the calculator up one more time because I want to just <laughs> re-double check my math. If he built f a carrier and five transports, then he'll have five infantry and five tanks that he could transport plus five fighters and a bomber now he could potentially bring this battleship out this way too but i could throw one of my boats in here and that prevent the battleship from being able to attack that turn so it would not be able to participate in a g6 sea lion All right. So yeah. So this is the type of thing you got to watch out for, right? Um, but this is what I built out for the possibility of a G6 Sea Lion. With me, I'm gonna have 40 IPC with UK, based on my plans. And so this is what my defense could be ultimately. And this is him doing five infantry, five tanks, five fighters, and a bomber, trying to take it. So it cuts it down to a 27% chance. So I feel comfortable with that. I do need to keep enough there that he has to build a, a uh, carrier and not just put like a, well, so he has to build at least a carrier <laughs> or build a boat, right? So, so yeah, I'm going to end up taking pressure off of Corellia, which I don't like doing simply because the, but the fact is is I mean he could send tanks he's got this stacked he could send tanks up there um, 
and he, he can protect it pretty easily. He doesn't really have to do much to hold it. So um, we are going to temporarily just take the pressure off of it so that um, I can bring more units down to Africa to start prepping the Africa defense that's going to be coming around the corner. We know it's coming around the corner, right? There's no real question about that, so... Now... Yeah, okay. The other interesting thing, I mean, he did give me the option to try to do a 1-2 here, but he could fly these fighters in to help protect, and so it's not really an option. I'm leaving the battleship live. I, I've got to take care of this battleship at some point. And that's where the sub buy could have been helpful, but I don't think I'm going to go with it. I think I'm just going to go with one infantry. And I'm going to go with building three fighters down here. Now, I am going to be using one of my destroyers to put in here to prevent the immediate Japan raid of Africa. And, uh... Yeah, so that's going to be our our uh, start and go there. I'm not going to build a factory here yet um, because he can probably take it and I don't want to just give him a factory <laughs> that he's just going to take, right? Okay. give I, IPC to UK as much as possible. Hmm. Let's see if he did 30, 31 to build six, he'd have to have 42. So as long as I got something there, we should be okay. All right. I realize I'm just going to put my bomber up there, but now I just realize my bomber's not going to fit up there because I want my bomber to go here. You notice I'm using my artillery because I'm going to use this infantry back as a blocker. Now, Japan can take it out, and if they do, then i got to be ready for that. Um, but if he does take it out, that also tells me his intention of blitzing these tanks through the next turn and I can always lay a US fighter down not ideal but that I'm ready to if I need to my only attacks this turn. I'm trying to conserve my Russian units as much as possible. Um, and I'm happy to blitz right now. UK can use the money because eventually they're not going to have money. <laughs> a good chance they're going to lose money. So we're going to get them rich while we can. Alright. So, this is the debate, right? I could use this to land somewhere. Um, he's got th two fighters and a bomber that could hit here if I took both these, if I used the U.S. So, still playing, he'd still clear it. Um, but bringing him down here, I can have the cruiser destroyer, and all he has is the one bomber, so... Plus, that keeps the battleship pinned in with the bomber that can come across in the cruiser. So,
I was hoping for the nice easy round four victory city win. Like I said, unfortunately, I'm gonna for me to win this game as you can see from my graphic of the the one that I had that early Moscow fall on G6. It means I gotta plan on a long game and again. Although I did hear um, Steam posted that they might be um, extending the season a little bit, so hopefully we'll get to see this game play out. Even with my mistakes and the fact that I'm still in it, I feel pretty happy about that. I'm just gonna take this guy because they either can take it or they cannot take it, but I mean that one defense against nine units and all his planes isn't worth wasting the dude. Yeah, I want this guy to help be dead zoning these. I was gonna be okay with them over here, but Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Well, we're gonna, gonna move the infantry there now. He could kill them. They're tightly in a dead zone, but then he'd have to let these guys live, right? And so then I'd be able to re-attack. So I'm gonna go ahead and move them in a technical dead zone, because I am gonna be pulling some of these guys back. Um... Now, of course, I can always just pull those guys back if I need to. I'm on up to Iceland so that he can come to here or drop on a carrier next turn. I'm going to think twice on this guy. I mean, I, I will have this fighter, so he has to put a boat down. Which means you can only have five transports max. And I can defend against five transports. Do I need this bomber to be in range of there or not? I mean, everything says no, right? Put him on down in here. Uh, this 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 does make me squeamish. I am not gonna lie. This makes me nervous. I feel like I'm I could be overlooking something here, but at the same time, I feel like I I should have. You know, he's gonna be able to bring two back or putting one in. I'll be able to build eight units, so that'll give me one, two, eight units makes ten. The two he's taking is eleven and twelve. Four units by the uh, U.S. transports that could both reach back into here would be sixteen units I could put there, which is what I have, and then he'd have ten plus five plus one. All right, I'm I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with it. I I just uh, I feel like I feel like I'm missing something here. Important. It's just one of these gut instincts that something doesn't feel right, and I hate that feeling. But so, double check here. We should have a couple planes coming in. Plus we're building. in there 
Yeah, so I was just double checking. The India, he's got a 34% chance at negative, I don't know, 15 IPC or something. So IPC value may be worth it, but he's got to go all in on it. So, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. We can move these guys out of the way, right? Because he could double back that way and just wipe them. Not that they're going to do a lot of defense there either, but... Make them work. So we're going to put our three fighters in there. One dude, this feels very lonely. <laughs> And I, I think what I'm not paying attention to, and this may be what ends up hurting me, is a 1-2 type of build in here. But I'm hoping I'll be flying all these fighters up, and then it'll, it'll put a ruin to that. But this is very, 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 very scary. It does not feel right. This is what makes me very nervous. I, I don't know that I've ever had England this empty in a KJF. Um, so that's what that looks like. Here's a little better view of this part of the board. Like I said, the good news is we're, we're safe G5, and we might even be able to be safe G6. And then this is what we've got defending down here. He's got the one fighter that can join, but this is our defense and here we've got mixed carriers and whatnot. And he's got seven fighters that can hit hit this zone. Like I said, he could hit this zone, but he has to attempt to take here and anything he sends, because he's not going to be able to take this with the destroyer block. So, I mean, he can, theoretically, but it's not be able to be able to attack these and land in this zone and come in here. So anything he sends here will be sacrificial at best, and he'll have to sacrifice a unit against here and here. So it's, it's, I kind of like this little play, that these, uh, these guys should be safe. So, alright, there we go. Da, quick end point on here. I remembered what I forgot. And that is the fact that he could bomb UK as well. And if he gets a hit there, that'll throw all my number crunching off. And could give him better options there. So right now I do think I have it at like a 25-30%. So he'd need to hit a couple IPC down. Um, but that is, that's the one thing I did forget. Is that he could do a bombing run to limit my production there. Thankfully it's only one bomber right now. Later on that becomes more of a an issue. Alright, there we go. That was my last little bit. Oh. Alright, guys, so Japan 4, he did go for the India shot, which is interesting to me, and I think may have been one of the best things that possibly could have gone for me. Um, because what that means is I st four fighters survived now, I don't need any fighters in Moscow for G5. And y'all recall I was saying I need, you know, like seven, eight. Really, I need to get to nine. <laughs> I miscounted. So I, I just recalculated everything. But I've got four U.S. fighters that could land in India this next turn. So then I'll have eight fighters between G5 and G6 that can move up, plus one from here. So I'll have nine fighters I can fly in. Plus, I'm going to bring my bomber up here. Now, one of the things I'm going to have to keep an eye on, right, is he did keep his one infantry here. So, next Japan, Japan 5, he can send a transport, grab, hit here with three fighters and one battleship because there's only one unit. So, I do need to cover there, but I've got enough that I can build an AA and an infantry for UK here as well as a carrier and two fighters over in either C-Zone 6 or 7. 
on UK5, which means UK6, they can start flying. I can start doing my two fighter a turn pump from the UK into Moscow. And any of the sea lion stuff is going to be um, not looking so bad at, for a little bit. So the the AA and the infantry we allow should allow with dice not being too horribly me to be able to fly in all four of the uh, Americans because if you think about UK five these four planes are going to fly up so it's going to just leave the four American planes that I'm going to fly in there or five with the bomber sitting there and then what I build with UK which would be an infantry and artillery and I'm hoping. The most he gets is three hits out of the infantry and three fighters, and I wipe him out. And then I can fly at least four, if not all five planes, U.S. planes, into here. Like I said, then I'll also build the carrier over here. Meanwhile, we're going to fly these two fighters over to C-Zone 61, where this carrier is going to catch them. And then on U.S. 5, they can pump into... Uh, Russia additionally I don't need all four of these fighters for the fleets that I'm gonna be able to fly two of these fighters over here to Egypt that I'm gonna be working on stacking up that can go one two three four so then I'm gonna have six fighters that can fly in for the next for the G7 attempt so the reason I tell you all that this, and this is why getting fighters, finding ways to get the fighters to the center of the board can be critical. So here's my calculators. And what I calculated is if he did a max build, um, so this turn, G5, you know, he can't build. He just has what he has. And this is what he can attack with. This is what I'm going to have defense wise. You know, we, we got good odds there. G6 now. I get my nine fighters and my bomber in there and he builds out three bombers and artillery and infantry. I, I've figured out what the biggest attack power he could have would be. He gets up to a 40% chance of winning Moscow at significant negative value. Then I'll be able to pump in those six more fighters I was just talking about for G7 as well as counting the three infantry I can build for Russia and you'll see G7 he's actually gonna lose odds as he goes along so if he continues to focus on tanks then that's gonna be trouble for him so we might just might be able to sneak by that peak in there and meanwhile once I land my carrier I'm gonna start landing my troops on the this side so that he's gonna then have to start dealing with a Western Front so it's going to be tight. Now, the one thing I did not calculate in those G6 and G7 odds is Japan suiciding themselves into Moscow, you know, including these fighters. You know, he can move the fighters on land on J5, J6, hit there, and then, you know, J, uh, J6 hitting, and then G7 maybe getting a little bit better odds. But I'm feeling pretty excited about where we're at now. Uh, he's only got a handful of Japan troops in there. Fleet's not coming back. He's not going to be building any transports in here. He may consider building a factory, which at this stage in the game with so few land troops is tough if you buy it, build it on the coast. So he might look at like a Kazakh um, factory for Japan to start being able to build units in. So starting to feel decent here I, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit okay it's going to depend on j5 and how that india handles out so here's the rest of what i fully expect g5 he's going to take persian push his tanks as many tanks down here as he can and still hold caucasus which means he could put a whole bunch down here so he's going to be looking at taking india g6 since again i'm hoping to have it so he can't come here so that's why all i'm going to leave here is there'll be one infantry and one AA. So I'm ex fully expecting him to take India G6 and then try to come back for Moscow. So I want to make that as challenging as possible. So 
that means on UK5, US5, I want to get units in range of being able to attack India. For the UK, unfortunately, that really only means there's going to be just this one guy on a transport that I'll be able to position. Um, there's not much more I can do about that. But the US, we've got two transports here. We are going to take Borneo this turn and stack it. So he'll have his one on US 4. This guy is going to come down in here and drop his two units here where they can't be hit. So then on US 5, they can go 1, 2 so that I can get a factory getting ready to get up on here. So I'll have one infantry sitting here, one infantry sitting here. On that turn five, I can bring both transports back here where I will build three ground. They can pick up four, five ground, plus all my air that I'm gonna have floating around threatening India. So hopefully we can make this a uh, back and forth a little bit and make them work for it. So in any case, that's our plan and that's what we're gonna stick to. So. Like I said, we're going to be setting up the two-fighter UK pump coming in this way. I'm going to continue. I'm going to just leave this carrier parked here where he can send two fighters here this turn. Two fighters built here. Next turn, they can fill there. The ones here can go into Moscow. So we're going to have a four-fighter pump going to Moscow um, during all of this setup. I don't need more boats down here because he's been excommunicated and they're only going to have one ground unit to play with so that's nice these eventually will cause havoc over in the Atlantic and I'm gonna to have to defend that but we'll worry about that as we get as we have to deal with that basically so meanwhile I want to continue to work on pumping up transporting units over here in order to protect the G6 Sea Lion and keeping it down at around a 30% shot. I've, I've got to use my transports to take three of these units and this guy so that they have four units capable still of coming back to the UK. So it's, I'm going to bring a couple. Of, I'm going to bring a couple guys down south here with the tank so that they're getting ready for mobility in case Japan comes over this way. And uh, we're just going to get set up that way. So I'm going to be building two infantry that I'm going to put here that can come up to here. So one of my transports is going to come down to 23. Next turn he can come to 10. My other transport is going to come up to 10 to meet him. And so then I'm going to just have a, a U.S. shucking going on here. And unless he brings his bomber out to the coast, I don't have to worry about the bomber disrupting it at all. If he brings it to the coast, then we'll adjust to what we have to and then of course we are going to build an industry for the philippines so an industry two fighters two infantry is our build this turn so like i said we're going to bring him right on down into here i was i was considering every which way to possibly um take the DEI and kill this infantry now but it just makes things too awkward um, and too possible for a goof up so we're not going to we're going to save that and take that the next turn don't think we have any other attacks I don't think he can hit one two three Yeah, so the UK fighters will be able to take out the transport. We'll take him out with the uh, two fighters that we're going to keep back with the fleet here. I could take everything and attack the fleet right now, the Japan fleet. I could do a 1-2, and, and, it, and it's pretty good that I could uh, kill it, but I wouldn't have my fighters survive to get to Moscow. And since this fleet is relatively impotent, since it's only going to have one... Japan. This is more deadly. If he had all eight of those infantry that he's taking around with him and coming around here 
Then he's threatening DC and London with four transports, and that would have been more scary. But since he's only got one infantry, we'll, we'll find a time to pick him off some other time. And I'm just going to let the fleet live for right now. Let's see, I think that's all our attacks right now. I do still need to use a destroyer block for my guys going in here, which is going to be my four destroyers carrier loaded. We're going to send all my beloved planes possible into there, and everything else is coming, including the destroyer, the battleship and the cruiser coming on down into here. Carrier's going to sit tight. So... No, 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 no. Let's see. What do I want to take here? Unfortunately, this is going to leave me a little bit thin that he can do a transport attack somewhere along North Africa that I'm not super excited about. But, oops, give me my transport. do that do I just want to leave it like that it exposes these guys but if I move the infantry up I mean they're kind of exposed I mean he got fighter bomber battleship two units I could come over anyway so I think we'll go that way with it keep our destroyer to help Protect our UK transport there. complex down put our two fighters there put our two infantry here so now all three of these transports can work back to UK to to save it um, if he hits it and I'll have the eight build plus the fighter coming back so we'll hope my math was good on there a little, I'm a little concerned about that, to be frankly honest. I ain't going to lie. But we are here. We're done. All right. I'm not going to build the second AA yet, because over the next couple turns, I'm going to have just... I'm predicting enough to buy an extra man. So it would be a matter of where... I guess what's that, that come to? Um, well, it'll be where I can get an extra. So I'll have an inf two infantry versus being able to buy an AA. And I think two infantry is better off than the buying a second AA. We're going to keep an eye on it. We may end up buying a second AA at some point. But right now, I don't need it yet. So uh, I'm not going to do it yet. So if I go back, I just want to double check myself. Go back to my G5, 1 AA, 30 infantry. I'm thinking about leaving 1 infantry out. 
and leaving him this so that he has to put his infantry again so that he has to attack there. I have thought about putting a couple infantry in the AA and make it awkward. But you know what? There's no tank over here. I'm going to move him in. I'm just going to save him. Let him move one infantry over. Let him do it. All right. We're not going to waste any ammunition on Japan with these guys. We just they're, they're, these guys are going to have to wait. And Japan's going to get a little bit of money, but you know, ultimately when this falls, if as much of this is orange, that's less money that than uh, that Germany can't have. So yeah. Feels like 25 versus 20 there. But it's a whole lot of infantry, I guess. So let's do, let's do the uh, Danny Uncanny math here. So these will count as 69. These are five each. So I got a 79 total attack strength. These are five each themselves. So that's 65. These are four each. So 24, so 89, so yeah, he's good, he's he's safe. So that's that's what that total attack strength, total defense strength. If there's a five point difference, then it's a statistical win. But he's got over uh, whatever, like a 10 point on his strength. Plus, that's not counting the AA hit point absorbing. So he's safe. So we're not going to attack anything. We are just Russia turtling, Russia turtling, Russia turtling. All right, here we go, turtle power. So, I, 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 I really feel like him hitting India at a pretty big loss um, was a mistake. I, I, I really do. I think he should have took those eight units, moved out this way, and then been able to go here and create all sorts of havoc elsewhere um, instead of just burning up three of his plane and all that eight infantry and whatnot. So we'll see if I'm right. Like I said, I fully expect Germany to be sitting here next turn. So we're not going to build a lot in here, just enough to protect from Japan, and then get all of this hopefully flown into Moscow. We don't have to worry about the German bomber can't do a clearance yet on the blocker. So we're good there for another turn. And then hopefully we're going to be you know, again, with us moving things in and moving people up, I believe these C zones should all be dead zoned. So if he's going to stay, you know, in anywhere in here, these ranges, he'll have to use a, a blocker or two in there. He uses destroying cruisers, blockers, and the cruiser won't block the subs, obviously. So, so I got to feel like these guys are going to have to move out. And like, you know, he could send a transport over to take Australia for a turn. I don't know. Maybe he could bring all these guys. He might be able to bring all these guys down to 38. And uh, use destroyer cruiser protection. He's, his fighters appear one, two, three. They can't reach. I don't know. I'm not sure what exactly he's going to do with that, that Japan. I, I feel like this was a mistake on his behalf. And that's going to creep that door open a little bit more for me. All right, so here we head into UK5, and things are getting interesting. Purchase for Germany, eight infantry, a transport, a carrier, and artillery. So <laughs> I was going to make the comment last time. I forgot I was going to make the comment. Who needs to kill that battleship early? <laughs> Maybe I'm going to be eating my words now. Uh, 
<laughs> maybe I need that battleship dead now because this is uh, an interesting development. So let, let's talk about what that means. So he built a transport and a carrier. So he spent 21 IPC on Navy for the Germany. So the first thing that means, that means Moscow is not as in trouble. So I don't need to send as many fighters as I initially needed to. Uh, as it turns out, uh, double checking my notes here real quick. I will need to send five fighters at least into Moscow before Germany's six. So G6 is not an issue. So that's good. Uh, obviously, you know, he did what I expected here. India's toast. But what he is doing is he's making Africa toast early. So if he starts making early toast of Africa and eventually takes Moscow, then that's a winning board for Axis at that point. So I either need to stall this. Well, I need to stall this as long as possible, and I need to get reinforcements to Africa as quickly as I can, but this Navy is going to make that, that much more challenging. Good news is we had already talked about it. I planned on dropping a, a carrier and two fighters up here in the Atlantic this turn. And I got this to cruiser. The My plan down here is I am going to go. I don't need to build my infantry in AA. So that 80 APC, I'm just going to build a destroyer too. So I'm going to match his carrier and raise him a destroyer <laughs> with the UK. Um, obviously, so what, what else does this, what does this fleet mean exactly? Um, one, if it combines with the Japan fleet, this is going to be a pretty massive fleet with three battleships and four carriers floating around. Not something I want to deal with, <clears throat> to be frankly honest. So that's one thing that means I don't want them to join. These tanks here and two transports that can come and hit Egypt next turn means... Germany 6, he's going to control the Suez. So he just needs to make Japan 6, you know, he can pull his fleet over here, tuck them in, do whatever. And then on, uh, excuse me, Japan 5, he can pull them in. Japan 6, he can pull them on into the Mediterranean. And now we got a massive fleet that's going to be problematic. I told you these guys were going to be in trouble at some point. I didn't expect it quite this way. So... What that means, to nullify that, all my UK plus these four fighters, these four fighters, so the eight fighters, destroyer, two carriers, two subs, and a cruiser has a 75% shot on his fleet, so I'm taking it now. I'm going to go ahead and try and wipe the Japan fleet now and not save it for later. Because then, US comes into C-Zone 36 with all of their might, and we've got this dead zone from the Germany fleet leaking out this way. The UK with a cruiser, destroyer, carrier, and two fighters sitting in C zone six, as it's going to be, which I'll explain in a minute why we're doing C zone six, keeps C zone 13 mostly dead zoned. If one fighter survives from here, they're going to land here and they one, two, three, four. Then we got C-Zone 13 dead zone. So we'll have this in dead zone. We'll have this in dead zone so that we're keeping his fleet contained in the Mediterranean. Because the last thing I want to do is have his fleet getting out and doing something like taking DC or messing up the shuck down here or whatever. So for, you know, contained in the Mediterranean is not necessarily a good thing either per se. But it's better than it merging with the Japan fleet or coming out and you know, threatening London and DC at the same time. If I don't have one fighter live, which pray to pray to pray that we have at least one fighter live, the average is that we have a cruiser or that we have four between cruiser and fighters because it takes it takes cruiser out first. So it, the average result is four fighters live. So I just pray I have at least one because then that'll contain them. Now, I hope I have better than that. And if the first round of dice go well, I may try to save a carrier. We'll see. Uh, it's more important that we wipe them. But this UK fleet, then that just leaves me just the US to handle this corner of the world, which is kind of nice. So I'm not having to do the, the dual armies and whatnot. So that's 
not a horrible thing. And then UK is going to be developing here, so they're going to be trading this front. And then Africa is going to be the big question, right? So now I get the Mediterranean fleet contained in the Mediterranean. Oh, if one fighter does not live of UK, then US is going to have to look at building uh, enough subs to sink. I guess that's probably what three subs to be able to sink the battleship because the UK should knock out everything else at least. Um, but they'll need three subs to be able to sink the, the battleship. Hopefully I don't have to build those. I'd rather spend that money elsewise. Um, the good news is U.S. has the money, but I'd rather build a couple more transports and get a little shucking fleet going here um, to contest the fact that he's shucking directly. I gotta, I'm gotta, i going to have a two-step shuck because of these fighters getting in the way. Um, so yeah, that's what all this is kind of looking like. Interesting, to say the least. So again... It means Moscow is a little bit freedom. So now G6, like I said, I need to have five fighters. I'm going to have seven. So G7 compared to a max build of him and him taking these four units into directly into Caucasus. So I'm taking, if he takes these four to Caucasus, if he brings these two infantry into play, if he builds four units here, if he builds a tank up here, and then a couple bombers with his money, you know, his max attack force. What's the threat on Moscow then? And then to defend it comfortably, I need to have 12 fighters in there for the G7 attack. Now, 11 fighters is not horrible. I will go with 11 fighters in there. It gives him a 60% chance to win while losing at a you know a 20 to 30 negative IPC value for him. So. I'm willing to risk it, risk it for that. So if I get 11 fighters in there. So let's count our fighters. These guys can't be there, right? I'm designating them to fighting. But we do have, for the G6, we've got four, five, six, seven fighters that can be in there. And we needed five. For the G7, we're going to need 11. Now, we're going to just make the assumption none of these eight live for right now now any of these that live could go up there but i'm just going to assume none of them live from this battle so we've got our seven these two will fly over non-combat so then they'll be able to fly over next time for the g7 so there's eight nine and by placing my carrier here the two fighters that i grow here can make it into moscow that'll give me 11 fighters and that's why we got to put the carrier here in C-Zone 6 this turn. I'm going to concede North Africa. We're going to have to concede a good bit of Africa, Africa, until we, can get, until we can work on containing. But the good news is if he's sending units this way, those units aren't going to Moscow. And hopefully we're going to start ramping up the UK transports and getting him trading over on this side. So hopefully we're going to try to limit that as well but yeah it just turned interesting I, I i was just starting to feel pretty good about where we're at and everything too okay so i i, I stopped mid thought because i was trying to double check uh, i was kind of curious on the uh, good old spreadsheet and i was just uh, updating it and again for what it's worth uh the end of last turn, I did take over the a slight attack power advantage, although I think he's maybe getting it back this turn so far because Germany can buy more than Russia, obviously. So, any case, all the talking is done. It's time to be, get moving, right? Make sure I got everything set correctly here. So we are buying a destroyer, a carrier, and two fighters to head up to here. Now, obviously, like the, the units over here are pretty much, let's see, one, two, three, four, yeah. Um, 
they're not going to do any good, right? They're, they're probably goners, so... Let's bring them on up here where they're going to be safe. And sometimes I'd like to build a factory for UK in here, but because Africa is going to fall quickly, I don't think I'm going to this time. And then it's all about this. It does mean I'm not even going to worry about the uh, transport here. Come on. Come on, let's work here. Work with me. There we go. Because I just want to make sure that we do good here. And we're just going to let that transport live. The worst you can do is come take Aus half Australia for a turn. Or actually, I guess Madagascar's the worst he can do and come on down that way. And there's not much I can do. You know, he can get to Madagascar and I can kill him with my bomber or something. But I just don't even want to deflect anything for him. So although it'll be a little bit of annoyance, I, I just I want to kill this fleet. And I want to make sure I do it as cleanly as I possibly can. Now, I'm putting my transport, dropping him here. Again, just trying to take as much as I can. I want Thailand for U.S. Now, I realize these three fighters can go one, two, three, kill my transport and this destroyer. But then they got to land here, either in Thailand or in the tip. And, you know, I got all my U.S. here that I can kill his fighters if he does that. So, if he wants to do that just to kill a, a, a U.K. transport, which I'm not going to need since I don't have any U.K. factories or any more U.K. men other than these three... Let him do it. I got no uh, qualms with that. All right. And this tank and fighter are just going to sit and turtle. So here we go. We're going to pull these guys back into the mainland and just keep retreating back and try to reinforce as soon as we can and fight back where we can. But I... Uh, yeah, here we go. This is the uh, the big battle, the big sea battle. We're hoping for a nice volatile battle and in our favor where we can maybe have six fighters live instead of four fighters live because I would love to have that happen. So the uh, attack power I have going into it is 35. His defense power is 31. So I should get six hits to his five if that happens i'm moving well if i do better than that i'll kind of try and save a carrier and it's unlikely so again let me just make sure i'm not missing something here four eight ten units 12 hit points that's what i got three eleven twelve fourteen units attacking so, yep, nope, I'm still going with it. We know the end game calculator. By the way, if you're if you're relatively new to the game, the end game calculator, do not trust it. <laughs> it does some funky things. I think it does it by IPC value, so he's got 21 extra IPC because of the transports. But obviously transports don't really affect the battle at all. So, All right, we need six hits to five or less on his side. Mm. Oh my god. Okay, well, we're definitely trashing the carriers because we went down a hit there. His destroyer's out. Is it better to take the cruiser or use the the hits from them? Uh, the surprise shots. I don't know if the surprise shots are better than the cruiser or not. Oh. Alright. This is one of these weird ones that I was playing with a bit different permutations. Um, more likely that he has a fighter live. But if his fighters live and I kill his carriers, it doesn't matter if his... Uh, so, long story short, we want the. I'm going to keep the sub so that we get um, C hits because 
we don't have to kill the fighters. We have to kill the carriers and the battleships. Ugh, it's killing me. Exactly what I didn't want to hit. God, the dice are killing me. Come on, I need a dice god makeup moment. <sighs> I was feeling so happy about this game. And this is where sea battles just get you. Oh. So that was a uh, bottom 10% result. God, dog it. And with his fighters still living, that's these guys are going to be able to come crush my U.S. fleet now. <sighs> Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. I just wanted to win the battle. I didn't care even if even though I was supposed to have four fighters live the battle. I didn't care if I didn't have a single fighter live, I would have been okay. But this this is a disaster. He's gonna be able to take out this guy. I mean, he can just simply take one battleship here, battleship carrier, three fighter. I mean he uh oh, God. He can still use his battleship to I, that makes me f very frustrated. You know, when my own blunders in the beginning of the game was messing me over, I'm okay, not okay with that, but, you know. But, man, when I get to a position where I feel like I can overcome my own blunders and then get dice mauled, it's so frustrating. All right, I'm done complaining. Moving on. All right. So we are back for our game that is made of dice, so I am not going to complain anymore. And moving forward. Uh, so he bought three infantry, three fighters. I did kill off three of his fighters, so that puts him back up to six fighters once again, which he's got inland and over here. He's not going to strafe um, Moscow to set up Germany, so means I, I will at least Moscow will make it a G7 at least um, th really through G7 to G8 is what I really mean to mean mean to say is that he'll be here come G8 <clears throat> is when they'll probably take Moscow of course they're gonna take India next and Africa is gonna start falling apart so that's the part I wasn't counting on Africa starting to fall apart already um, and I still got enough of American fleet that I think I can well stacking here is going to be a 50-50 for his 
three fighters coming in with his three boats. Um, but we're going to take it because we need to go ahead and take DEI and try to keep the transport alive. Um, between these guys, these guys, and the fighters that'll be up here, I think I'll have C-Zone 34 dead zoned. I don't know. I mean, he could put three battleships and two carriers in there be next round because he's going to take both of these with Germany and six. So G7, he could theoretically put all of that over there, I guess. Um, I don't know. And on this side, I'm going to start working the carrier back, going to be building some U.S. ships. We got some <clears throat> UK ships, so we should be able to unify down here before they get around and be able to combine with the German fleet. And that's really my biggest thing, is I don't want the German fleet and the Japan fleet to merge, if at all possible. So um, that's what I'm going for. Of course, like I said, this one little infantry is going to be uh, a bit annoying. He won't be able to land in South Africa, or else I'll be able to you know, hit him with these guys and or uh, my guys I'm bringing over here. Uh, but then they're going to stop me from landing any more troops into South Africa until I get more down this way, which I don't know. It's all not the greatest situation, but we're just going to have to make, make the best of it that we can. And so he's going to stop my U.S. shuck for a while, which means he's going to get plenty of German units down into Africa. But we'll see how we manage that, and we're just going to do the best we can. I mean, like I said, the good news is he can't completely bail out. He's got to worry about Moscow and taking Moscow at some point. Um, and if he takes too much out, then we can start moving Moscow around. I do need to – I'm going to have to pause on the Russian turn to see if um, if it's a possibility to maybe uh, take and stack up here, you know, as well as Moscow. I'll have to look uh, and just see if there's uh, any, you know, anywhere possible where I can just go ahead and stack and keep a little extra income for a little bit. But still have this safe for G6. Because we got a lot of fighters. We got six fighters coming in for G6, so that's the positive. All right. So, uh, yeah, he did that. Um, combat, he took Belagda up here, and he took Madagascar, obviously. I was planning on using this bomber to try and kill these two guys, but maybe I can get my two AAs with and my two infantry, my two AAs come back here so that he'd have to use his transports and use this bomber to pick off the Madagascar guy. So I don't have to worry about that issue. About him taking anything with that, you know, South Africa, Brazil, coming back around to New Zealand. Any, anything for that matter. I think it might be worth going ahead and just picking him off with the uh, bomber rather than attacking here like I was going to. I mean, I'm going to fall apart in Africa regardless, right? So, eh. So, yeah, no, I think I might do that. I might just go ahead and try and pick that guy off and not let him capture any more territories. I think that's the right thing to do. All right. So, in any case, purchasing units. Um, we're, we're not going to get max pressure on in India. I, I just I feel like getting all these territories is more important. Um, one, so that I don't have to have 36 stacked from the fighters going one, two, three, and landing. And he can't get you know fighters you know them back or one, two, three, and landing. So to do that. We're going to have to have one American take here. We're going to use a transport to take the other American down here. And where's this bomber at? Make sure we're not one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're good there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we're good there. Okay. So we can claim all of this. And then let's see. So we'll build two infantry for that transport to be able to grab next turn. All of this is going to go to DEI. And so that'll get us three infantry, three U.S. infantry facing 
India at least. We're going to go ahead and build our factory. We're going to need to build two factories next time. So purchases, building three infantry. That doesn't feel right. Okay, our factory, two infantry, and I was planning on a fighter down here. And then that would give me two destroyers over here. Two destroyers to go with the third destroyer to be able to one, two dead zone, C zone 13 is what that is. I need at least two boats coming in. I could do it with two subs. And that would give me uh, a 7 IPC. But I don't really have any for him anywhere in, anyone for him to transport at the same time. So I'd rather keep the surface ships, the destroyers versus subs for, you know, air protection. Because we're going to need it as this game goes on. So I might just bank that three IPC for next turn, because next turn we're going to want to build two factories. Good news is we're going to add seven IPC to the U.S. this turn. So yeah, I think we're going to bank the three for right now, because the transports can't pick up the guy over there at all right now, and we'll just save it for next turn. So there's our build. Plus, if I pull these guys back and it makes them come this way, that's less soon that they're coming this way, right? So I don't even think he'll chase them. I think he'll let them live. Maybe. I hadn't really thought about what I was going to do with these guys. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. I was going to come down here. That's what I was going to do. Not much else we can do with them. All right, well. Let's go bomber. No, oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Whew. All right. <laughs> Happy with the final result, at least. So now we don't need to protect them with anybody. I don't believe. One, two, three. Oh, actually, you know what? They could. He could sacrifice his carrier if he wanted to go one, two, three, and then land them on the carrier. I don't know. I mean, I guess I'll sacrifice two transports for a carrier if he decides to. I'd rather.
use one less here. What's the six? I really do want those fighters to live, though. Because I want those fighters going into Moscow. It's kind of important the next turn, so... I don't think we can pull off three destroyers real well. Yeah, it's 50-50-ish. I mean, he could take... You know what? We had a bad dice, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So that he'd have to actually attack C zone 35 as well, not just move his carrier in there <clears throat> in order to kill those guys. Ah, nah. I just really want to make sure these fighters are safe up here because. Keeping in Moscow another turn is bigger than the one U.S. transport. I don't even care about the U.K. transport, right? So I'd rather Moscow live and more confidently live another turn than to give up the, the U.S. transport. So I think, yeah, we're just going to keep it that way. We're not going to give them the 50-50 on season 61. I think that's it. There we go. I'm going to be back in just a second. Yeah, so I don't think any tricky plays that I'm going to do. Um, I was thinking about take him to stop the tank blitz and then throw enough units up here to stack Arch. Um, since we got the two extra fighters that we didn't need in here. <clears throat> but I really can't get enough to stop him from a, a two fight or two infantry, three fighter, and a bomber strike. That is profitable. So I, I don't think we're just gonna we're just gonna let them live this time. Um, and 13, 16, 21, 24, 25, yeah, 32, but <laughs> not the attack power. Um, so here's the interesting thing that I think I am going to do, though, is I'm thinking multiple turns, right? In particular, I'm thinking about the, uh, G7 build for Germany 7 and what can we max defend with Germany 7 so I've got 13 IPC right now and I'm going to get 8 next time so that's 21 so I could build 7 infantry or would it be worth using one unit to take here and that takes me up to 23 so i could build six infantry in an aa um you know then as i think about it that so that would basically be trading two infantry for one aa does have six planes coming in but i think two infantry is going to be a better defender than one aa if i if, if my memory is not off here. So I, I just, I don't, I actually don't think, I wish I had a tank there that I could just blitz it and take it, right? But yeah, no, two, two infantry is definitely going to be better than one AA. So we're just, we're just gonna turtle. Cause you know, again, we're taking up Japan income, so we, we prefer Axis to have a split income. They're gonna have Kazakh at some point, so might as well let it be split between uh, Japan and Germany instead. But we are just gonna build four infantry so that I can build three infantry next time. And we're not gonna 
not going to do any combats. We're just waiting out until we are ready to move out. Now the bad news is he obviously he has all that mobility with these tanks. The good news is he's very weak on infantry up this way, so I'm probably going to bail north when it does come time to bail, which is probably going to be Russia 8. Most likely. We'll see how things come out. 